You know, it's pretty rare for me to go for 100% completion in a video game. I've done it a handful of times in recent memory, but there's just so much to play in this era of games. That and also not a lot of games really give you that desire to check everything off there is to do, especially when it comes to going for certain trophies or achievements. But God of War 2018 defied that prophecy for me. I played it for the first time in 2021 and I loved every single second of it. The story, the gameplay, the soundtrack, really everything kept my attention with that game. So I naturally went out of my way to do everything there was to do. And that left me waiting for the sequel, which is of course God of War Ragnarok. The story starts off super strong with this sequel and it wastes no time getting you straight into the action. The first hour is one of the most action packed intros to a game I've played in a long time. I played it on the PS5 in performance mode and you can tell straight away the upgrade in the graphics from God of War 2018. The textures are sharper and really the whole atmosphere is different because of Ragnarok. The design of the new realms and the redesign of the old realms that we've already been to in 2018 makes this game feel fresh. The only thing I found to be kinda overdone is the amount of unnecessary puzzles that you have to do. None of them were really that difficult, but you can notice how much it slows down the gameplay. There were so many times where you would have to open the door with a puzzle, but there will be a clear opening that you can easily see that you can use to get around the door by just jumping up somewhere, but obviously the game forces you to do the puzzle. The Blaze of Chaos actually allow you to traverse around the environment a lot in this game, so that's why it doesn't make sense to have a door blocking your path when you could just use the blades in any other scenario to get around something. And then certain puzzle elements or environmental markings telling you where you need to go next kind of blend in with the environment. They don't really go for like the yellow marking approach that most games go with. The markings are usually like white or blue or sometimes they don't even have any markings to tell you what you're supposed to do next. Uh, and also the compass can be pretty confusing to follow sometimes in this game. I found myself getting lost a lot and I've been playing video games for a long time. So it's like uh, there's certain cues that are missing to or just certain directions that are missing to help you get to where you need to be. And all of these things slow down the game a lot more compared to the first one. And just speaking of pacing, I feel like the middle of this game had a lot of fat or not a lot, but some fat that could have been trimmed out. There are a couple of sections that play out for a little bit too long and don't really have that much action in them. Uh, the writing of the story was still top tier regardless of that though, but I just felt like they could have sped up some areas of the game. But besides that, the writers controlled this story pretty well for the most part. Uh, there's a lot of intense moments, sad moments, and just a whole range of emotions, but mostly the funny moments. There were a lot of times where I would genuinely be laughing at the dialogue and that's kind of hard for me to do. As serious as Kratos can be, the way he would respond to certain things was just funny to me. I don't know, maybe it just fit my sense of humor, but the voice acting was on point across the board and there was just a lot of quotables that stood out to me during this game. Death can have me when it burns me. The soundtrack was of course fire just like in 2018. Uh, shout out to Bear McCreary, he really be doing his thing, bro. Uh, the music really matched up with every moment in this game. The gameplay though, it got so many different improvements and add-ons that make it feel like a whole new game. Some people were saying it was probably going to be like a DLC of God of War 2018, but some of the biggest things that I can bring up is that the triangle button has a actual purpose now, because in 2018 it didn't really do anything. You can use it to basically power up your weapon's next attack, which is kind of cool. It has its like own cool animation every time you do it. Uh, there are interactable objects in the environment uh, for the most part that you can use in combat, which is cool. Uh, you could perform different death from above attacks, which is one of my favorite things to do. Just jumping off a ledge into a group of enemies was just super satisfying. Uh, just the overall combat animations and executions that you can do were super smooth in this game. They also made a big improvement with the variety of the boss fights. Back in God of War 2018, one of the only negatives i could say about it is that you would fight like the same troll enemy over and over again but 
I don't know, they definitely made an improvement in this game to have more main boss fights for one, and then the side boss fights will also include more unique enemy types than before. But I still feel like God of War 3 might still have the better boss fights overall, but this is top tier as well, I'm not gonna lie. The one thing I will say is that it does take a while to unlock a lot of the good stuff you can use in this game. One of the examples I can give without spoiling anything is that I didn't get my first heavy runic attack until halfway into the game, which is crazy. And that is with me exploring everything that I possibly could at that point in the story. I was looking at every crevice and I just could not find a heavy runic attack until halfway in. And that's honestly just a small example. A lot of the upgrades and even bigger things that are unlocked much later on are like locked behind basically the end game. And that also circles back to the middle of the game just having a little bit too much fluff in it. Uh, but that makes me curious to see how they're going to uh, do the new game plus feature, which they haven't added yet. They're probably going to add it a few months from now. But uh, that's just really, you know, some things I could say. The UI for the shop and the menus also could be better. It can be pretty confusing, especially when you first start playing. Shoot, even when I was halfway through the game, I was still confused what was going on. But I feel like the UI recently in games has been kind of strange. I don't know what's going on. The weapon and upgrade uh, armor system is pretty much similar to God of War 2018. But of course, they got some differences, some add-ons on there. The skill tree is slightly different from God of War 2018. Some skills you already have when you first start the game that you would have have to use xp to get in the first game but one thing i do like about this skill tree is that the more you use the skill you actually get a chance to unlock a perk and then that perk you can decide what you want it to do whether that make that skill do more damage you can make that skill uh inflict more stun and just stuff like that it's just a lot of different ways you can modify your playstyle. really across the board you're given a lot of stuff to work with in terms of combat for this game so i feel like by default it makes the game a little easier which isn't too much of a bad thing but I would 100% do a new game plus playthrough on a higher difficulty. So if you're, you know, kind of experienced with these God of War games, I say you start off with a higher difficulty than normal, at least because that wasn't too difficult and challenging for me, at least. Uh, but a majority of the side missions do have an interest in storyline, which makes you want to actually go out of your way and do them. Uh, and they also kind of fit in with the main story a little bit. So it makes sense. And they also give good rewards for some of them. So it is worth it to do some of the side content Then some other side stuff that was in God of War 2018. That was kind of looked at as kind of just extra and like a collectible, uh, such as like killing all the Odin Ravens. There's actually rewards every time you kill a certain amount, which is good. They have side bosses that are equivalent to the Valkyries from God of War 2018. I wouldn't say they're as difficult, but they are there for sure. Uh, and there are other side bosses that match that level of difficulty for sure. Even when finishing the main game story, uh, there's some end game content waiting for you, which is worth checking out in my opinion. Another major quality of life improvement that they made with this game is that you don't have to go all the way back to the realm travel room just to go between realms. You can use the mystic gateway to basically travel to wherever you want to go in the game. Uh, and this is actually helpful in case you want to go back and get stuff that is scattered around each realms because there's a lot of mystic gateways usually in each realm so that makes it easier to do that but some other things i wanted to point out is that i wish they would have read out more of the runes that you find that are kind of like lower in this game back like how they did in 2018 the blue text that you find for most of them you have to pause the game and then read the lore for yourself uh, it's not too much of a complaint, but it's just something that I like from the old game. But since I played on the PS5 and used the PS5 controller, uh, the adaptive triggers, they actually are set up to only activate when you're performing like a certain action, swinging your axe at something. It doesn't happen when you're in combat, which is good. So that's uh, something that could be annoying in PS5 games that I usually turn off. But in this game, it was cool to me. Uh, the accessibility options are also really good for those who may have trouble uh, just getting through games due to like disability. I'm pretty sure one of the awards that this game won during the game awards was for accessibility options. So stuff in this game is in place to help you kind of get through it. Uh, but last but not least, I had a couple of glitches during my play session uh, or my playtime throughout really this whole game. Most of them were minor visual glitches, but I had one instance where I got out of the boat and some of the sound effects got completely muted for some reason. Come here. What's the deal with Odin's ravens? 
They can just smell the smoke. There's another mining rig here. I had to end up restarting from the last checkpoint to fix it which wasn't really that much of a big deal. I was just doing a side quest at the time, but most of these bugs are probably fixed by now because there have been a few updates since then, but I just thought I would mention it just because it did happen. Overall, I would 100% recommend this game, especially if you enjoyed God of War 2018. It is a direct follow-up, so you're gonna have to wanna play that game or at least watch a summary of that game if you wanna get into this one. I do feel like it was a great follow-up and it was the end of the Norse mythology storyline for God of War. So it perfectly tied things up in my opinion. At first I was worried it was gonna feel a little too similar to the 2018 game, but it does a lot of stuff differently to make it feel like its own game, which it is. Uh, it might not have won game of the year, but it is definitely next to Elden Ring in terms of quality. Elder Ring just happened to come out on top because of its impact. It brought a whole lot of new people to like the Dark Souls type of genre of gaming. And it was really just more unique if I'm being honest. So it could have went either way for game of the year, but it would have been well deserved no matter which game won in my opinion. But let me know what you guys think in the comments about God of War Ragnarok. And yeah, that's gonna wrap it up for me. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this little review. Make sure you guys drop a like if you did find it helpful. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.